Hi everyone, this is Dr. Saiti, Team MDS Conquer. So, right now we are going to have a quick revision of your histology specimens from your oral pathology. Okay, so all the important diseases and the respective histological features I am going to discuss now. And these histology pictures are directly taken from your Schaefer textbook of oral pathology. So what I want to suggest is give a good glance to the pictures that I have posted and also read out the description that is given below. Okay, so as the, from oral pathology, the histology aspect is quite important. So I have discussed almost all the important diseases from your oral pathology and their unique histological presentation. Okay, so let's start with the first one. So if you see, this is a potentially malignant disease wherein the advanced stage has shown fibrosis of the lamina propria as well as a submucosa. So where do we see this fibrosis? in a potentially malignant disease so it's quite obvious it is a oral submucosal fibrosis okay so there's a fibrosis of the lamina propria and submucosa so that is oral submucosal fibrosis and now here you can see many malignant melanocytes that is invading the underlying connective tissue so this is nothing but a vertical growth phase which is characterized by the malignant melanocytes invading the underlying connective tissue seen with the malignant melanoma okay so this is seen with malignant melanoma okay next here if you see there is dilated thin walled vessels okay so that is stimulating a stag horn and that is seen associated with hemangiopericytoma so wherever you see this unique names that is being given for a particular feature either it could be clinical or a histological or radiographical so or a radiographical uh, presentation just grab them out okay so here if you see there is a stag horn appearance so that is because of dilated thin walled vessels which is seen with hemangiopericytoma next Ewing sarcoma so here you can see small round blue cell tumors histologically and also you can see multiple mitotic figures in the field okay small small round blue cells you can see right so that is seen with Ewing sarcoma histologically so do note this as well next here there is a neoplastic spindle cells of osteosarcoma that is being embedded in the matrix of osteoid that is tumor which is being produced by these cells so this is osteoid cells whereas you can see numerous neoplastic spindle cells which is embedded in the matrix of osteoid and next again a unique feature staris sky appearance seen with Burkitt's lymphoma so here you can see it's a starry sky appearance okay so that is a unique feature of the Burkitt's lymphoma Next, Reed Steinberg cell, again a unique feature of the Hodgkin's disease. So, wherein you can see cells with large pale nuclei containing purple nucleoli. Okay, so purple nucleoli will be there and this is again an indicative of Hodgkin's disease. Next, multiple myeloma. So, here if you see in the lower a lower low power mode there is abnormal plasma cells and in the medium power mode these plasma cells are little similar to that of the normal plasma cells but they are poorly differentiated and you can see the benzone proteins the light chains in the urine as well so this point is given here okay and there is a in the uh, in the third picture if you see this is a smear of a bone marrow aspirate wherein you can see numerous plasma cells with eccentric nuclei and perinuclear halo of clear cytoplasm so you can see eccentric nuclei with a perinuclear halo of clearer cytoplasm so all these are the pictures related to the multiple myeloma and obviously the last picture being the punched out lesions in the skull so this is a clear cut picture of multiple myeloma okay so the plasma cells right so it is a disorder related to the plasma cells so you can see the abnormal plasma cells and that is clearly appreciated histologically so this description which is given here do read it out next pleomorphic adenoma so there will be cells neoplastic cells which are arranged in ducts which are arranged in sheets which are arranged in islands so there will be mixed appearance okay so and also few cells have vacuolar degeneration and are chondroid in appearance so this picture is related to the pleomorphic adenoma so being the most common benign tumor of the salivary gland so therein this will be arranged in ductal sheets as well as islands so you can see this picture you like many appearances of the 
uh, cells are there, the neoplastic cells, how they are arranged. So, that is related to pleomorphic adenoma. So, there is mixed appearance. So, it is related to pleomorphic adenoma. Wartin's tumor very very important again. So, it is an exclusively occurs in the parotid gland being the benign tumor occurring in the parotid gland and here there will be cystic spaces which are filled with homogeneous fluid and it is circumscribed by double rows of oncocytes having a stroma which is infiltrated by the lymphoid tissue. So, infiltration with the lymphoid tissue in a benign tumor of the parotid gland then you have to go for Wartin's tumor ok. So, there is double row of oncocytes having a stroma infiltrated with a lymphoid tissue underline and note it out and this is a histological picture related to Wartin's tumor. Next the party wall appearance seen with the canalicular adenoma wherein the tumor cells are, or the tumor shows the rows of cells which are arranged parallelly ok and they form long lumina having a canalicular appearance. So, this is regarding the canalicular adenoma giving this party wall appearance ok. Next is a mucoepidermoid carcinoma. So, this line if you see there are large pale mucus secreting cells that typically surround large or small cystic spaces and sheets of epidermoid cells. So, there are large pale mucus secreting cells with typically surround small cystic spaces and sheets of epidermoid cells. So, they are mucus cells and epidermoid cells. So, it is mucoepidermoid ok. So, it is a classic picture of the mucoepidermoid carcinoma. Next again coming to the cyst. So, if you see the Tom Stone appearance or the picket phenems appearance and there is about 8 to 10 layers thick lining of the epithelium and uh, it is palisaded pattern ok. So, this is again with the OKC right. So, it is seen with OKC. So, very important histological picture of OKC just grab it out. Next again very very important which I feel which you must have missed out is the histological picture of the radicular or the periapical cyst ok. Here if you see the cyst is filled with an eosinophilic coagulum containing a slit like spaces which contain the cholesterol. Okay, so, there are slit like spaces as you can see that contains the cholesterol and B if you see there are peculiar shaped structures which are eosinophilic and they are described as lady hairpin shaped ok. So, the ladies hairpin shaped which you can see here. So, that is again with radicular cyst. So, this is a very unique feature related to the radicular cyst. So, do note it out. And next is the ameloblastoma. So, the various types of ameloblastoma being the follicular plexiform and the C oh sorry the D one is a basal cell and the E is acanthomatous and F is granular. Actually, it is quite difficult at this stage to identify the subtypes of ameloblastoma, but just have a look of this and if you are aware of the histological features, then you can answer, but these are the subtypes. So, just give a glance to it, ok. Next uh, apple red birefringens which is seen in the Congo red stain and that is seen with CEOT or the pinbock tumor. So, apple red birefringens you can see in the description and also the picture clearly shows it. So, under, under a polarized microscope or a light source you can see this apple red color birefringens of the amyloid. So, there is amyloid which gives us apple green color birefringens ok. So, which is seen with the CEOT or the pinbock tumor. Next is COC wherein you can see sheets of ghost cells ok. So, you can see the cyst of ghost cells as that is shown in the picture. So, there are sheets of ghost cells and also the lining epithelium is palisaded hyperchromatic columnar nuclei and uh, stellate reticulum like area and the sheets of ghost cells are there with the COC and dentigenic ghost cell tumors you can see there is aggregates of ghost cells in association with the odontogenic epithelium. So, as you can see here there are many aggregates of the ghost cells that are seen with the dentigenic ghost cell tumor. So, just give a glance to this. And now the owl eye appearance which is seen with the cytomegalovirus. So, the arrow points show typical inclusion body and the owl eye appearance which is seen with the cytomegalovirus. And this is related to osteogenesis imperfecta. What I want to suggest is just read out the description that is given below 
ok so here the bony cortex is thin and porous and there is a trabecular which is thin delicate and widely separated and many osteoblasts and osteocytes are present but the formation and organization of the osteoid is deficient obviously it is not that easy to note all these features in a histology slide but the description if it is given like this then you can go for osteogenesis imperfecta ok so there is less bone matrix which is less than normal but most of it again is oven and non lamella bone with collagen fibers of small size and random distribution ok so this is regarding osteogenesis imperfecta so do read out the description that is given below ok next the chinese letter pattern so where you can you can see with the fibrous dysplasia so that is pretty clear the chinese letter pattern seen with fibrous dysplasia and next cherubism wherein you can see multinucleated jain cells cherubism being a multinucleated lesion it's a jain cell lesion so there will be multinucleated jain cells so here in the description you can see the last description which reveals a cellular fibrous mass with interspersed first multinucleated jain cell so that is regarding cherubism so if they give a clinical picture of a child having a little bilateral presentation of the uh, expansion of the jaws okay and they give a radiographic presentation like this and if histology says that there is multinucleated jain cells which are interspersed within the cellular fibrous mass then you have to go for cherubism okay and next here it is of perinaceous anemia wherein you can see macrocytosis and poikilocytosis ok so this is regarding the perinaceous anemia so the variation in size of erythrocytes is quite obvious so the size of erythrocytes is variation is there so that is regarding the perinaceous anemia and the characteristic pear shaped or tear shaped erythrocytes are present so in addition so this is a bit underlined to be underlined point so these are the diagram based questions so at times the examiners want to pull out the lines which are given below the diagram from your textbooks ok so those are the areas which we usually means we will not give that good uh, like I mean we will not have that good idea right so uh, we will just turn over the pages and we will not look at the description that is given below the diagrams but there are features or characteristic features which are given below the diagram so for example here you can see the pear shape or tear shaped erythrocytes so that is seen with this picture of a pernicious anemia ok so you even those areas are quite important so that is regarding this and now if you see these are sickle shaped erythrocytes so quite obvious sickle cell anemia so sickle shaped erythrocytes you can see ok so that is with sickle cell anemia ok next infectious mononucleosis so you can see a peripheral smear that exhibits atypical lymphocytes with indented nuclei ok so that is illustrated here so there is numerous atypical lymphocytes that is seen so it is seen with infectious mononucleosis and in A if you see the picture of a person uh, which where there is severe cervical lymphadenopathy right so there is severe cervical lymphadenopathy as you can see and the histology shows atypical lymphocytes so that goes in favor of infectious mononucleosis next uh, oral lichen planus so here there is a basilar degeneration that you can see in picture a ok and these are the various other histological pictures so do read out the description given below and one of the classic histological feature we know it is saw tooth retipex again that is seen with the lichen planus next test tube like retipex if you see that is seen with psoriasis ok so here also you can see test tube like retipex so that is seen with psoriasis ok next this is again with the pemphigus so wherein you can see supraglacellar cleavage ok supraglacellar cleavage you can see and there are numerous jank cells so jank cells not only with pemphigus vulgaris seen with herpes simplex and herpes zoster as well ok so they are jank cells but here in pemphigus vulgaris you can see the supra basilar cleavage ok so supra basilar cleavage with jank cells ok so this is regarding the pemphigus vulgaris and immunofluorescence gives a fishnet appearance ok so very important to do read out 
the, the things that is given here. So this is being the early stage wherein supra basilla split will be there with numerous jank cells. Okay. And in bullous stage, there will be acantholysis with occasional leukocytes in the bullous fluid. Okay. So the B denotes the bullous phase and this is the early stage of vesiculation with supra basilla cleavage or supra basilla split with acantholysis and numerous jank cells. So, this is regarding pemphigus vulgaris. Now, secretorial pemphigoid here there is subepidermal in pemphigus vulgaris supra whereas in pemphigoid especially in the secretorial as given here it is subepidermal. Okay, so that is regarding the secretorial pemphigoid. Okay, so these are the few histological features of few important diseases which I have covered. So, give a good glance to all the pictures that I have posted and do read out the description given below each and every picture and wherever you find a unique feature or a unique name in respect to that particular picture again note it out. Okay. So, all the best for your exam. So, this quick revision I feel it could be important for you. So, do not miss any of it. Okay. Thank you.